Ryan, why is it um, that you and Pat seem to have gotten along? Do you feel like you're similar personalities? What, what has that, uh, why is that relationship mesh so well? Uh, I mean, a number of things. I think we are very similar. Um, you know, I certainly admire Coach Narduzzi's work ethic would be one thing that really stands out, uh, having played for him, watching the way he prepared and watching the way he uh, knew the scheme inside and out and the relationships he had and built, you know, took time. And then, you know, working under him at Michigan State, uh, just really loved the way he worked. I mean, he's a guy who's in the office, you know, you know, the preparation he did to, to game plan uh, was impressive and something uh, that, that I'll never forget. And so um, I think that work ethic thing is something that, that really drew us together. Obviously, it's a power five job, but what, what kind of opportunity did you see at Pitt? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot to it, but an opportunity to, to coach at, you know, the highest level of college football is huge and exciting. I mean, uh, you know, coming in here with uh, an awesome defensive staff, getting to work with uh, Coach Bates and Coach Partridge and Coach Sanders and Coach Collins is, is awesome. I mean, these guys, you know, sit in a room with them and evaluating, you know, what we were able to do last year here. Um, is exciting for me. And so the professional development there uh, with the staff and the opportunity to coach some of the best players in the country is exciting for me. Ryan, what are your thoughts on the linebacker room you're inherited and some of the talent that you, that you know is there and, you know, what you've seen from them and what you're trying to, what you're going to try, try to push to get out of them this year? Yeah, it's, a, it's a, you know, a lot of guys in that room, a lot of older guys, guys that have played. Now we're inheriting some, some super seniors, which is different. Um, and so exciting, you know, exciting for me coming into that room to be able to, um, you know, work with what they've already done, which is some really exciting things. You know, I think it's a group of guys that's very athletic, um, plays fast, um, you know, making plays in the backfield. Um, things, you know, continue to, to work on um, as I come in is just football intelligence and uh, refining some, some different collision skills and, and techniques and where we're keeping our eyes. Um, and so I think there's, there's an opportunity to continue to get even better and build upon what we have there. Ryan, when you were playing at Cincinnati, what was uh, Pat like as a as a coach, as, as a D coordinator there? Probably the same as you you know. I mean, he, he's a very intelligent guy, very intense, um, and, and you know, I, I think that's that's how I look at him, um, and that was impactful and very impactful for the guys that um, I played with. You know, I was fortunate um, at the University of Cincinnati. I think to spend three years. When, with Coach Narduzzi as our defensive coordinator. And when he left, you know, that left a lasting impression. Um, our next coaching staff that came in Cincinnati was Brian Kelly and the staff that he brought. Um, and I think as a senior, um, we ended up doing some good things, winning the Big East at the time um, and playing in the Orange Bowl. As I looked around, we had 11 senior defensive players that all had been groomed under that Narduzzi defensive uh, regime, which is, you know, we looked around, we were all cut from that cloth, came through three years of that. Um, and, and so that was, you know, something that I'll never forget. That was powerful for me. Ryan, you mentioned the super seniors. Uh, how important are those guys who've played a lot of football at Pitt at linebacker to you as far as helping you in your transition? Huge, huge. And just being able to uh, lean on those guys for the way things have been done, the way uh, they operate and, you know, the challenge that I've, put before them is to make sure they're leading, you know, showing the younger, younger guys the right ways to do things um, and, and using that experience for the betterment of the whole group. I know we have a, a good grasp of what's required to do the job at this level, having played high level college football, played in the NFL, we were at Michigan State. What do you feel like you learned maybe that you didn't know uh, going to the FCS level and the Division II level, becoming a coordinator, and now now coming back to this this level of football, what, what do you feel like that experience has kind of taught you? Certainly a lot. And, um, you know, you go to the different levels and you learn, you know, if you, you compare it to business, right, you leave a corporation, you go to a small business world where you have to do a few more things, wear a few more hats. And I think that's helped my development, see, see the bigger picture from a different lens. Um, certainly it's helped me grow as a leader. Um, and, you know, as it applies here specifically, you know, schematically, being able to see some different answers with different personnel and being able to apply that uh, coming back to the system, I think will, um, will be an added thing. I can, I can help with the defensive staff and, and what we're doing in game planning and from that perspective. How Ryan, different is what 
How different is what Pat and this defense uh, under Randy Bates are doing right now compared to what you were running at Cincinnati you know, way back in the day? Surprisingly, much of it is the same. And, and as, um, as you guys know, the game continues to evolve. And um, I think what's, what's been different since Cincinnati is RPOs. Um, whereas when I played, right, you could read the offensive linemen. And for the most part, they told you the truth. If it was run or pass with, a, you know, maybe a draw um, or a screen, which was the caveat. Now, now that offensive lineman showing you run every time. And so you're dedicating, um, you know, second level, third level players to say, are you a run first or pass first player? And so that's really what's changed. Um, is keying and devoting uh, responsibilities and assignments a little bit differently. Uh, but the, the, you know, the, the main parts of four, three quarters are still there, um, which, which again, have stood the test of time as far as defending people and being aggressive and yielding some good defensive results. Ryan, for those that, you know, follow recruiting, everyone knows certain assistant coaches recruit, recruit certain areas, certain states. I mean, what, what kind of areas do you have connections with? And, you know, where do you kind of get the sense you'll be able to recruit? What areas? Yeah, so I'm, I'm deeply tied into Ohio. Coming from Pickerington, Ohio, um, you know, it has become a, um, a powerhouse in the state now. Um, you know, Coach Sherrod has done a great job there. And, um, you know, it's, it's a place, Ohio, that has good football and has over the years as far as uh, the number of talented guys that come out of there. So that, that's first and foremost um, where I'll be deeply vested and then, you know, linebackers all over the country and a little bit of Atlanta. Um, and so that's what I'm looking to do. Ryan, as you look at your group, when you get a chance to evaluate them on the field, what catches your eye? Like, what do you want to see from a pit linebacker? Speed. I mean, speed's going to be our calling card within our system here at linebacker. That, that won't change. Um, and, and we've, you know, had a chance, like I said, I've only been here a short while, but to see those guys move and watch them lift, the explosiveness, the speed they have, um, it's an exciting group. And so, again, it'll be um, not teaching them how to go, but refining that and being more efficient, I think, will be uh, what we'll look to do. Coach, we've all asked you a couple questions about working with Coach Narduzzi and everything, but nobody came right out and asked, give me your favorite Coach Narduzzi story that's clean and, and <laughs> usual. Uh, there's a lot of them, you know. Trying to, yeah, trying to fit that description. I can remember specifically playing, um, you know, when I was a redshirt sophomore, we were at Rutgers. It was a good team at the time and going into halftime and, you know, we we're a little bit behind. And, um, you know, I think, you know, does the best, Coach Narduzzi does one of the best jobs of providing players information at halftime, what the opponent's doing and what we need to do to stop them. Um, and I think he ended that speech with a fist through a projector that really got us rallied going in the second half, which um, that's clean, I think, but that's also the intensity. Uh, like I said, paired with that intelligence that really had a lasting impact on me and got us going. I don't know if we ended up winning that game, um, but certainly we were, we were fired up and ready to go for that second half. Any final questions for coach Manilak? Have you busted any projectors, Ryan? No, and, and I don't think we use the old school projectors anymore. You have the more of the, uh, you know, the, the little document cameras that, that wouldn't be quite as dramatic to bust. Um, but no, so that hasn't been a part of what I've done yet. Also more expensive. No doubt. No doubt. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up there. Coach, thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. Excited to have you here, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, and I appreciate everybody's time today and uh, look forward to doing more of this. Thanks, guys.